everybody and welcome to the Proverbs 31 morning show. My name is Maddie Vincent and this is my friend and co-host Nicole Moses. Hi everyone. You guys, this is our second morning show ever. We're so excited to be back with you. We meet here for our morning show every third Thursday every month and we're so excited that you are here with us today. Yes, it has been a month since we last connected but we really want our friendship to be one that picks up right where we left off. So grab your coffee, get cozy and settle in because we have a great show planned for you all today. If this is your first time tuning into the Proverbs 31 morning show, welcome. We are so glad that you are here. We created the Proverbs 31 morning show because we wanted a morning show that had all our favorite things about morning television, but also had the things that we need the most, like God's truth to get us through our day. So we are so glad that you are here. We have your comments right here on our computer. We can see you guys. Hello, Valerie Wilson. We're so glad you're here. Diana, Dina, Mary, we're reading your comments as you come in. So tell us what you guys have been up to this last month. We want to know, Nicole, what have you been up to this last month? Oh gosh, just spending time with my husband, with my dog just staying warm it's cold here it's not snowing though which it's you know if it's snowing. cold I would rather it snow I see so many people tuning in from Texas if yes. you're from Texas let us know how you're doing we've been praying for you guys yes absolutely Maddie what have you been up to this month you know I haven't been doing a whole lot I think the biggest thing that I've done this last month is I built a mirror isn't that crazy? Yes. I didn't actually build the mirror part. I don't really know how that works, but I built a frame around the mirror, and it was yes. awesome. And it, it looks really great. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, well, Maddie, one of the ways we like to start each morning show is by sharing some headlines from around the ministry because, as you know, there's always something fun and really exciting going on at Proverbs 31. You're right. So this week, we are in Foundations Week for our new First Five study, How Then Can We Be Friends? Foundation Week is where we lay the foundation of what we're about to study and how then we can be friends is based on the book of Philippians and we're really excited. The study starts on February 22nd, so if you're not in the app already, it's a great time to get in the app and join us for our next study. Yes, I cannot wait for that study. And yesterday kicked off the start of the Easter season and we have a collection of resources just for Easter on the P31 bookstore. So make sure to check that out. You know, Nicole, my favorite resource um, that we're ha we have available for the Easter collection is, is the Answers to Our Deepest Longing. Oh, yes, It's a 40, 40 day study through the Bible. So good. We just did it last fall as a ministry and it was just really powerful and I loved it. So yes. if you're looking for something to prepare your heart for Easter, that might be a great option for you. Um, another thing that's happening in the ministry is we are in week five of our online Bible study of Forgiving What You Can't Forget. This is Lisa Turker's newest book. Um, the Bible study has been so powerful. We've gotten so many direct messages mm -hmm. and comments and emails from you guys that are participating in the study. And I just think that God has freed so much of us from our past hurt and pain and it's been Absolutely. really cool. If you've participated in that study, will you leave a comment and let us know? We're reading them. We're so excited. It's going to be great to just hear what your testimony is from this study. Absolutely. And speaking of online Bible study, Maddie, I think it would be so fun to tell our viewers who our special guest will be today. You guys are not ready. We have such a fun special yes, guest. Yes, if you know her, you love her. Kendra Schwarz will be joining us today. We are so excited you may have seen her if you're part of our online bible city community but she's so wise she's so fun and she's just so encouraging so we can't wait for you guys to hear from her today okay like any good morning show we have to play a game right um Absolutely. and we figured what would be a better game to play than a little get to know you game yes. about kendra before she comes on the show um so i'm going to tell you guys two true statements and one false statement that Kendra sent in and together we have to decide which one is the false statement. Are you ready? Does it make sense? I'm so looking fun. at the comments. Give me just a head like a thumbs up if it makes sense. Um, okay, are you guys ready? Yes. So the first statement that Kendra sent us is that she played violin for seven years. 
That's seven a long years time. is a very she, long time to do if anything. It's true, she's probably good at it. It yeah. That's a I've long time. I've never seen her pick up a musical instrument though, and I've known her for oh, a while. Okay. So All right. I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> um, the second statement that Kendra sent in is that she went to college to become a teacher, but ended up majoring in broadcasting. Which I kind of feel like Kendra would I be a great teacher. I, yeah, I think so too. Yeah. The third statement that Kendra sent in is that she was once in a tabloid. That is that's kind of interesting. Not, what? Okay. I don't know if that's believable to me, um, but maybe. What do you think? Maybe. I, I don't know. I kind of think she wasn't pictured in a tabloid. I think that's the false statement. There is this really funny story that happened at work a few years ago. We have a big conference every summer called the She Speaks Conference, and getting ready for the conference is always this hands-on, everybody on staff is helping out, getting ready for the conference, and we rented a moving truck. And this moving truck company was having this promotion where if you rented a truck and you posted a photo on Instagram and used a hashtag, they would take those photos and put them on the side of the truck. Um, and so we're all putting, loading things onto this moving truck as a staff, and all of a sudden we look up and Kendra's face oh is my. just plastered on the side on the of this moving truck. truck. Um, so unless moving trucks are tabloids that now, I don't know if I, I don't believe know. Maybe the she got them mixed up. I, I don't mean, know. maybe. We'll have to ask her. <laughs> we'll make sure you tell us in the comments which one you think is false. We are getting ready to bring Kendra out, but before we do, we thought it would be so fun to share with you guys one of our favorite things that Kendra does on her Instagram page. She helps us all stay in with the time, stay relevant by breaking down some lingo and trends that you may have been seeing around with the Gen Z generation. So let's check it out. Okay, so if you have been following me for any a certain amount of time, I used to do this thing called Stay Relevant, and I stopped doing it for about a year, talk about a hiatus, and I've been waiting for a time to bring it back, and I think the time is now because I found something out. And that is, my friend Jessie said she read an article saying that this emoji is out, that you should not use it anymore, and I am shook, probably can't say that name anymore, because I use that emoji all the time. So then I was talking to my friend Hannah, who has a sister who's Gen Z, and she confirmed that you don't use that emoji anymore, you use this one instead. And I am just all out of sorts. So Stay Relevant is back for the sole purpose, because I am once again very irrelevant. Welcome <laughs> to the morning show, Kendra. Kendra. Thanks, Shores. girls. Thank We're so you. excited that you're here. Actually, your name is Kendra Shores, but not for that much longer. Not for that much longer, because in 29 days, I get married. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, so Will, I see Will in the comments. Is yes, he here? I saw Will in the yeah, he's in the comments. <laughs> Will hey, is hi, Will. fiance. Hello, Will. Hey, Will. Uh, so in about a month, you'll be Kendra LeGrand. That's true. Yes, that is very true. And Maddie, we have you to thank for that because you actually introduced us. I did. <laughs> you That's don't. Maker Maddie. All, all my life, I've wanted to um, have a successful setup, and you guys are my only success story. So well, I mean, I'll take it. Thank you for giving that <laughs> to me. Does this mean, because I introduced you guys, does this mean that um, your first child will be named after me? You know, I think Madeline Legrand yeah. has a really great ring to it. So, Will, let's talk about it later. Yeah, we're Will, here. let's talk about it later. <laughs> we're here Will. first. <laughs> well, Kendra, we're so glad you're here, and we are just dying to know what your two truths and your lie was. Okay. But before you tell us, let's just remind everyone what the options were. Okay, so number one, you played violin for seven years. Mm -hmm. Number two, you went to college hoping to be a teacher, but later switched to broadcasting. And number three, you were once pictured in a tabloid. Yes, okay, are you girls ready? Yeah, ready. do you wanna know what people are guessing? I would actually love yes. that. Okay, no one believes number three. Like lots of people yes. <laughs> are voting number three, Okay. and a few people are voting number one. Okay, well that's good. So let's do a drum roll and let's reveal. So the false statement is, I never went to college to be a teacher. 
Really? Really? It's true. Yeah. yeah. It's just probably, I think teachers are great, but I don't know if I would be necessarily good at that. <laughs> I, I think you'd that, be great at it. Thanks. Yeah. I yes. think that your students would love you. <gasps> Thank you. I do like to have fun. So I'd probably do elementary school if, if that was the oh, case. Oh, <laughs> so fun. Well, that was so much fun. Thanks so much for sharing yes. a little bit about yourself. I hope you all love that as much as I did. Kendra, why don't you tell us what you do here at Proverbs 31 Ministries? Okay, I would love to. So I have the opportunity to work with two teams. One is the online Bible studies team and one is the first five team. And ultimately what I do is ensure that the study starts on time. So I get to work with some wonderful people to make sure that happens. Kendra is being very humble. She has a very important <laughs> job at Proverbs 31 and so much of what you guys get to do is because of Kendra. Oh, so we're kind. just really excited yes. to have her here. Thanks girl. Today. And we're really excited about the topic that you're sharing about. Yes. We're gonna talk about friendship and biblical friendship and how so we can good. be friends even when we disagree. Yes. And it's really special that you're here doing this because you have had a journey. I have. That's when a good it comes way to, to friendship <laughs> over the last couple of years. Yeah. So let me preface this by saying um, I have been in counseling for a few years now. I love counseling. And one session, my counselor looked at me and said, "How many best friends do you think you have?" And I boldly and confidently said, "At least 20." <laughs> And then she helped me realize what true friendship meant. And now I'm probably around the three best friend range. Yeah, which is good. Nice. <laughs> yeah, so I'm excited to talk about friendships. Are you guys excited to talk about it too? I'm very excited so to talk excited. about friendships. All right, girls. Yes. So to start us off, we're going to be talking about relationships. And we're going to be answering the question, are relationships worth fighting mm -hmm. for? And before we do that, I do want to say we're talking about the friendships and the relationships where you might just disagree, not necessarily the re relationships that may be very unhealthy. And if you do have any mm -hmm. questions or comments about maybe an unhealthy relationship that you are in, go ahead and leave a comment and we'll be, and we'll be sure to give you some resources about that. Okay. All right, girls. So we're answering the questions. Are relationship relationships worth fighting for? And so I want to know, what do you guys think? Yes, no, kind of, maybe, are they? <laughs> do I think relationships are fighting for? Simply, yes. yes. I think that relationships are very complicated. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think that ending relationships is complicated. Yes. So I think that both choices are hard choices. Yeah. Um, but I do think they're worth fighting for. Yes. All right, Nicole. Yes, I absolutely think that relationships are worth fighting for. I think that sometimes, though, after you've been fighting for a while, you may begin to wonder, should I keep fighting for this? Is right. it worth it? Maybe it gets tiring. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think, like you said, Maddie, simply put, the answer is yes all day long, but I think it can be a little more complicated than that. I agree. And so I have two examples I'm going to give you all today about different friendships. Mm. And so the first example that I want to start with is I have a dear friend that was in town this past weekend, and it's a friend that you can sit up all night talking to and like crying with, sharing okay. memories with, um, talking about some hard things. And I left that conversation feeling completely filled up. Like my soul was filled and I loved it. But like you guys mentioned, what do you do with the friendships that maybe are a little more complicated? Mm -hmm. Maybe you leave the conversation confused or you feel exhausted. Maybe you're disagreeing on more than you're agreeing about. So what do you do with those relationships? Well, during our next study, so we're in Foundations Week right now, but on Monday, February 22nd, we begin our Philippian study, which is called, How Then Can We Be Friends? Overcoming the Issues That Hinder Your Relationships. And so there are some relationships that may be hindered, right? I don't know if you guys have those relationships in your life. <laughs> um, but let me ask you this. It's a study on Philippians. Write in the comments, have you guys ever read the book Philippians? Do you know much about it? Because if you don't, I think I have a way that we can look at it that makes it maybe a little more easy to navigate. So let me ask you girls this question. Do you guys like getting snail mail, meaning letters in the mail? Yes. 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 I yes. love it. Yes. Okay. So listen, um, Philippians is written in a way that's like a letter to friends, mm. which is a really easy way to understand Philippians. Yes. Um, because sometimes when you're going through your bills, maybe it's nice to get a letter from somebody, maybe a grandma or maybe yes. a friend. I get birthday get cards from my grandma even to this day, and it is the best. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> it is. I love it. So Philippians is like a letter written to a friend, okay? And so I'm going to go back to my example number two, which is I have a friend who is the most joy-filled person that you may ever meet, which is a very bold statement because I'm sure there's a lot of people in our lives that are very joy-filled. Yeah, for sure. Um, but this, this person and I have been in relationship for many years, 
and there was a time that we agreed on absolutely everything. Like it was almost scary how similar we were, mm -hmm. but as we grew and as we matured, so did our opinions mm -hmm. and perspectives about things politically, spiritually, relationally. Like we are just sometimes now clashing more mm. than we are agreeing, which is okay. But it led me to ask the question, is this relationship worth fighting for? Would I be okay if this relationship ended? Should I go through a formal friendship breakup? I don't know if you guys have ever broken up with a friend like you mentioned before, yeah, but yeah. there is it's, no joke. It's hard. It's so it hard. I mean, it's hard. a whole different side of like grief. Yes. And loss. Absolutely. Yes. And yes. I think the enemy would love to feed me lies when I ask those questions. Like, yeah, just go ahead and cut it off. Like, yeah. not worth it. Like, mm -hmm. don't have that person in your life anymore. But that's because the enemy doesn't want us to be in relationship. Yeah, like, right. he doesn't want us to um, do the thing that God intended for us originally, which was to be to do life with people and to yeah. be in relationship. Mm -hmm. And so God's original design was to have friends and be in relationship with other people. And if you struggle maybe with some friendships, or maybe you're not exactly sure if you have those friendships, I think this is a great community, the Proverbs 31 community on Facebook, online Bible studies, first five, like there are some wonderful relationships that can be formed. And so we would love this place to be your community if you may struggle with yes. that. But what I realized through this relationship that is a little harder to navigate is I'm called to do three things for this person I'm in a relationship with. And these are biblical, ready? So we're gonna go to scripture a little bit. So number one, I'm called to spur this friend on so spur them on and spur is kind of a yeah weird. I don't I don't <laughs> what does spur like, mean tell us like, what that spur, actually I means I don't use it in my everyday lingo yeah. but what it really means is we're called to encourage yeah mm -hmm. and so Hebrews 10 24 through 25 says and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works mm -hmm. not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near so we're called to encourage okay the second thing is very similar to encourage, but we're called to build one another mm. up. So cheer them on, okay? Yeah. So 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. So with this friend, I'm supposed to celebrate their wins with them, mm -hmm. um, maybe offer um, a word of encouragement mm -hmm. or pray for them. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing is we want to be excited when something exciting happens in their life or mm -hmm. if maybe they go through something hard, we wanna be there by their side and, and help them through that time. And so Romans 12, 15 says, rejoice with those who rejoice and mm -hmm. weep with those who weep. So good. And so the friendship that I was kind of on the fence about like should I even put an effort anymore is it even worth it I would say a resounding yes mm -hmm. because we have the opportunity to display the gospel by maybe being on different sides depending on the topic but ultimately still loving each other building each other up and encouraging one another and so what I've come to realize is simply put God entrusted us to each other um, for this season and maybe for a long time hopefully a long time but as of now we're in each other's life for a reason mm -hmm. and I think it is to do those three things that I mentioned and so in Philippians when we study it together beginning beginning on Monday um, there's a verse that we're gonna study that I really feel is something that this friend and I are learning how to live out and that is first Philippians 1 27 through 28 and it says I may hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit with one mind striving side by side for the faith of the gospel and not frightened in anything by your opponents and so what I can say confidently is this friend and I, we're learning to stand firm. We're, we're navigating that. We're doing so side by side. So we're still doing life together, even if we have some different views and we're fighting for the relationship because we do believe it is worth it and it's a way to display the gospel. Yeah, I love that. So and Kendra, good. I love when you described friendship as being entrusted to one another. Mm -hmm. Like I'm entrusted to my friends as well as they're entrusted to me. And yes. Something right. is entrusted to me. I want to steward it well. Mm -hmm. I want to like do what God wants me to do with mm -hmm. it. And those three steps yeah. are really tangible ways that I can steward something that God's entrusted me with well. Yeah. So I love that. Thank you. Yes. Thank so you, good, girls. Kendra. And so we would love to invite you to study with us. It begins on Monday, um, February 22nd. And it's this, how then can we be friends overcoming the issues that hinder your relationships? And we would love to see you on the app or reading the study guide right along with us. Um, and you know what? what we don't want to just invite you to come and study with us without <laughs> maybe giving you 
something <gasps> to come oh. study with us. And so we have three copies of the new study guide, mm -hmm. How Then Can We Be Friends, um, that we're going to give away right now. So if you want to get a copy of this study guide, leave a comment and say Philippians. Our friend Macy, who is not here right now, she will be pulling winners and she'll let you know if you won, we'll get this book shipped out to you and you can start the study on Monday with us, which How is fun exciting. Is that? I also think that if you win one of these and you kind of want Kendra to write a personal note, just let us know. We oh, can yes. make it happen. We'll make I'm it happy happen. to do that. I'll write a little letter because it's a letter. Kendra, you know? if people want to connect with you yes. after this show, how can they do it? Where can they find you? Where yes. do you hang out? So I hang out a lot on Instagram, and so you can just follow me at Kendra Schwarz, which I believe is about to be on the screen, maybe, maybe not, but at Kendra Schwarz. At it. Kendra Schwarz. Yes. Maybe at Kendra Legrand in a few maybe weeks. Maybe soon, but let's not get too crazy let's with that. We'll figure crazy. out how to navigate <laughs> yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Find Kendra on Instagram. Yeah. If you loved this, send her a direct message and let her know how you felt about her oh, teaching. I, I know this encouraged that. so many people. Yes. Um, we're just so grateful that you guys are here today. Um, we want to remind you of a couple dates. One, that the study, How Then Can We Be Friends, starts Monday, February 22nd. Um, we'll also be back with another Proverbs 31 morning show on the third Thursday of March. Remember, the morning shows are on the third <laughs> Thursday. So we'll be back here at March 18th. And this time we have a really cool guest, uh, don't we? Should we tell them? Uh, do you think that they should guess? They should yeah. totally guess. Okay, guys, yes. put in your guess who do you think is going to be on the show next month. And we'll let you know who it is. I'm waiting for comments. I think it might I'm be looking. Joel. Ooh. I think Joel would oh, be a good guess. That's a good guess. Is that a good that's guess? That's a very good guess. Okay. Joel's a good guess, but it is not Joel. Okay, so that's good to know. If you guess Joel, If that you is guess not Joel, correct. it's not right. All right. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and let the cat out of the bag. All right, we're ready for All it, right. Mads. It's none other than Lisa Turker. Oh, oh, that's so a good one. Lisa Turker is the president of Proverbs 31 Ministries. She is a New York Times bestselling author. She just wrote Forgiving What You Can't Forget, which yes. we talked about last time. Yeah. Um, and she'll be on the show next month talking about um, how to see beautiful mm -hmm. in life mm -hmm. when maybe things aren't going like you thought they would. Yeah. We're so excited to have Lisa. She is just one of our favorite people in the <laughs> world, and so we're grateful that she's going to be coming on the Proverbs 31 Morning Show. So fun. That'll be great. Yeah. So exciting. Well, this has been so much fun. Thank you to our special guest, Kendra Schwartz, for being here. We are so grateful for you and your message today. And we can't wait to see you guys next time on the third Thursday of March. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.